one? Uh, that was pretty good. Wow, look at the choir over there. There's like, I counted 12 or 13 people over there. So full, and y'all sound great. And uh, I don't care how gloomy it looks outside, do notice that even though it is overcast outside, the windows are tinted, so it looks even more gloomy from here. So that means you, ha you cannot look outside today. You have to keep the view inside today. But it is uh, nice and warm and bright and cheery here in the Lord's house. And what a way to get started with our All Saints Day service, where we remember those who have passed on from this life to the next one by celebrating birthdays. And we have actually at least four birthdays to celebrate today. Uh, one of them is Tony Corbett. One of them is Becky Sutter. Becky, I, I, there you go, right there, in case they're, all right, thank you. Um, Sherry, who is here, where is Sherry? There you are. <laughs> you were over there last Sunday. <laughs> you got me. And of course, Jill too. So we have at least four. Do we have any other birthdays to celebrate that I have missed. Okay, how about anniversaries? Bob, 29. Happy anniversary. Very welcome. All right, well, uh, without any further ado, let us sing happy birthday and happy anniversary. many more, of course. And if you would, those of you who are tech savvy and looking on Facebook, would you join me in inviting our friends uh, who are on Facebook to come join us for worship today? That would be awesome. And uh, you never know, the person that you invite to join us online may someday do even more. They may join us in person. So there we go. I think I have done it. There we go. Super. Look at that. Listen, did you hear that? There you go. Hear that? I think the line there is every time you hear a, 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 a phone chime, an angel gets their wings or something along that line, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go on through the calendar real quick, please. We begin today uh, with our November calendar. You can see there's a lot there, and I don't expect you to have it memorized in 30 seconds. Give it a try, but the good news is if you don't receive our email newsletter, The Blast, you can get it, and if you'll just see Susan and give her your email address, we will get you signed up for that, and you can get this calendar in your email uh, box. But anyway, you'll see that today is our All Saints Day service, and then on Tuesday of this week is our prayer walk. We've had uh, three great prayer walks so far, and, and we're going to keep doing that. Uh, next Sunday will be our Veterans Recognition Sunday. So we know some of you, Don, Cheryl, can still get in your old uniforms, and uh, Gail Parnell, and some of us, some of you, I say us, I'm sorry, I, it does, does not include me. Some of you cannot, but if you have a hat or a t-shirt or something that you want to wear to commemorate your military service, we invite you to do that on this coming Sunday, a week from today. Uh, let's see what else we have there. On November the 12th at 10.30 a.m., CWF will be here, am I correct, in the building? I'm thinking it's 10 o'clock. It's 10.30. See, I'm, I'm always wrong. I'm always wrong about the times. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, on Saturday the 16th will be the sanctuary decorating for, uh, the, for Christmas, for Advent, and for the big Lessons and Carols uh, concert that is coming. I say concert. That's not right. I should say service. Lessons and Carols service coming up. Anything else about that, Ed? Okay, super. So from about 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And I got that part right. Super. Uh, elders meeting on the 21st, and then, of course, the 24th will be our Thanksgiving Sunday. Uh, turkey will be provided, and the rest of us should bring uh, something like a salad or a side dish of some kind, and we very much appreciate it. All right, next slide, please. Here it is. Here is the flyer. We'll be making these available, and we have already, I've seen this one flying around Facebook a lot already, which, for which I'm very grateful a festival of nine lessons and carols will be here on Saturday, December the 14th at 4 p.m. Why 4 p.m., you say? 
Well, you know the answer, right? Because if you don't drive after dark, you want to be able to enjoy the concert without worrying about driving after dark. So the concert will be, I said it again, I said concert. This is a service with scriptures and hymns and Christmas carols. It's going to be really nice. And I promise you, as I have correctly predicted in years past, this sanctuary will be filled with 200 or more people. So I do recommend coming a little early, just to make sure, about 3.30ish, I would say. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's why I kept saying, not a concert, say church service. Kirk? Not too early, because we're probably going to have the doors closed that's true. 10 minutes before. 3.40, 3.45. Two, parking will be the biggie. Ed? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to expand on that, but yeah, absolutely. This is our Christmas program. This is our, you know, cantata, whatever you want to call it, but it's called Nine Lessons and Carols, and that means it has all the scripture readings for the Christmas season, the Advent season, plus the hymns and the carols. And I tell you, it's going to be great. Saturday evening, 4 o'clock. Yes, Joe. That would be a question for Gail Parnell. And Gail, who's our hospitality. And so if y'all will coordinate, that'd be super. Yeah, I don't see why not. Absolutely. But uh, I'm not in charge. So uh, we send that through the minister of, of worship and outreach. So, But I would say between those two, it'd be a good person to talk. Yeah, I try not to step in front of other people if I can help it, but, uh, you know, sometimes I do by accident. This is, a, this is our church Christmas program. Please come. It's going to be worth your time. You're going to love it, and you're going to be blessed. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, we have a new slide, but they're both just a, re, a new flyer, excuse me, for Sunday morning worship, uh, Sunday school with uh, Tim Thompson. And now you guys are studying Isaiah. The coming Messiah. So 9.15 to 10.15 in the morning. Thank you. Next slide, please. Again, this is just a flyer for our prayer walkers. Remember that our goal is to fellowship, exercise, and when we run into people, we tell them who we are and why we're doing what we're doing. It has worked really well, and we'll continue to do so. So join us if you can. Next slide, please. Our usual Wednesday program, 6 o'clock handbells and Bible study. And then at 7 p.m., choir practice. And then let's see, what else do we have? Networks, our next flyer is, as always, please continue to bring non-perishable food items to networks. And next slide, please. Remember that we offer math tutoring on Sunday mornings from 9.15 to 10.15. And uh, if you have not turned in your pledge card, please do so. Is that good, or you want to say anything else, Sherry? Let me give you the microphone, sorry. That way people can hear you online as well. That's okay, it's on. So with 22 of our members having pledged, we have close to $90,000 pledged for next year. And if you haven't turned in your pledge card, it's a great planning tool for the finance committee. So please, please turn it on in. It can be changed throughout the year. It's not a contract. It just is a budgeting tool for the finance committee. And we appreciate all, the, all that you do. Don't forget, in addition to financial pledges, there's also your indication of how you would like to work with us. So once again, thank you. And um, we look forward to December when we can present the budget to you. Thank you, yeah. thank you very much. You just put it right there. Thank you. And finally, I do believe we have Bruce to thank for bringing in the goodies from Publix today. Thank you, Bruce. There's plenty of goodies out there, so be sure and enjoy. Get something on your way out. Are there any other announcements that I have missed this morning? Okay, then. Well, let us, let us proceed now to worship. Good morning. Today is November 3rd. This is our celebration of All Saints Day. 
Now I would like to invite you, those of you who are able, to pl please stand as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 526, The Gift of Love, verses 1, 2, and 3. Amen. You may be seated. We'll do things a little differently today as a few people make their way, Ed and Regina make their way over to the candles. As always, on this All Saints Day, we celebrate the lives of those who have departed. We also uh, remember uh, not just members of our congregation, but also family and friends that we have lost over the years. But especially uh, over the last year, we want to light a candle. Uh, Ed will do this on behalf of Joel Grayson IV, who passed away just recently, a few months ago. Joel was a lifetime member of this church, a third or fourth generation member of this church. And at the age of 86, and our congregation being 173 years old, that he was here for uh, his life spans exactly half of this church's history. So thank you for lighting the candle. And so now Marlo will ring a bell in his honor, and we will have a 30-minute moment of si 30-second, sorry, moment of silence. Now, we invite anyone and everyone who desires to light a candle in memory of a loved one to please come, take a candle, light it from the large candle, and to set one, set it in one of the two troughs there. Please come.
as you have lit a candle and you have placed it here in our viewing, we will meditate throughout this service on how life is like a candle. Prayer is often represented as a candle because the, well, these are really smokeless candles, but as the smoke or the incense would rise, it goes up to heaven, as do our prayers. Many of you, as I look across the congregation, have had recent losses, and you are still feeling the pain and the grief or the uh, adjustment of that, of, uh, of children, of spouses, of aunts or uncles, of dear friends, of nieces and nephews. But there are other kinds of grief that we also want to acknowledge and to express in the Lord's house. The loss of a friend, the end of a marriage, the uh, loss of other things in life that are dear and near, retirement even, in many ways, can cause a time of grief. Let us know that as we come into the Lord's house, as a family, as members of the body of Christ, we do not cover it up, we do not ignore it, we acknowledge it, we bring it out. But most of all, we realize the great hope that we have because of the resurrection. So join me now as we pray for this All Saints Day. All-powerful and ever-loving God, who kindles the flames of love in the hearts of the faithful, today we rejoice in the holy men and women of every time and place. We also call to mind our own dearly departed. Grant unto us the same faith and power of love, that as we join in their triumphs, we may profit by their examples through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now as the body of Christ, as individuals but also as one, we join together in our words the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time in our service when we offer our tithes and offerings and ourselves to the Lord. Would the deacons please come forward?
Our Father, we now ask that you would take this offering, use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, help us all to remember exactly why we give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. man who was blind called out to Jesus as he was passing along the road to Jericho. His name was Bartimaeus. As Jesus approached, the man asked him, or he asked the man, what do you want me to do for you? I would like to see again, was the reply. To this, Jesus replied, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, Bartimaeus gained his sight and followed him on his way. Notice that Jesus told the man he could go, but the scripture says that he followed him on the way. We should not overlook this seemingly insignificant statement. Bartimaeus was not simply content to receive something good from Jesus and then go on his way. Instead, he followed. And I think this is something we should take to heart. How often do we come to Jesus when we have a need and then we go on our way when we received what we wanted? As we come to this table, we are reminded of just how much Jesus gave to each of us. The bread representing his body the cup representing his blood. What good are we if we only receive from the Lord without following in his footsteps? And now for the words of institution. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was handed over took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death 
until he comes. And uh, bear with me as I repeat these words one more time. Yo recibí del Señor lo que también os he enseñado. Que el Señor Jesús, la noche que fue entregado, tomó pan. Y habiendo dado gracias, lo partió y dijo, Tomad, comed, esto es mi cuerpo que por vosotros es partido. Haced esto en memoria de mí. Asimismo tomó también la copa, después de haber cenado, diciendo, Esta copa es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre. Haced esto todas las veces que la bebéis en memoria de mí. Así pues, todas las veces que coméis este pan y bebéis esta copa, la muerte del Señor anunciéis hasta que el venga. Let us pray. Jesus, as we partake of this bread, representing your body that was broken for our sins, we ask that you keep us ever mindful that our we to always remember that we are a part of what you are doing here on earth. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you humble and grateful that you gave up your only son so that we may live and the day will come when we will meet our loved ones in heaven once again. Please forgive us of our many sins, dear God, and help us grow closer to you and live more for you each and every day. Amen.
Our text today comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace, the word of God for the people of God.
Yeah, I felt it too. You wanted to clap, but you're like, oh, it's so, so peaceful, so soothing, right? So respectful. But uh, it is appropriate, in my opinion, to clap when people have blessed us with the gifts that God has uh, shared them or given them. And they're sharing them. So appreciate that. What a touching song. And what a, what a great uh, spiritual act to speak to our hearts and not just to our minds. Now I'm going to try to speak to your minds a little bit, but hopefully also to your hearts. When I was a boy, I hated Charlotte's Web. It seemed like every so often it would come on TV, and I would watch it, and I would hate it. <laughs> you know, so you may ask yourselves, well, if you hated it so much, why would you watch it? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad, if it, even though it made me sad, I'm glad I watched it because I think I understand it a lot better as an adult than I did as a child. And in fact, I would say that I have come to appreciate this story as an adult for the very reason that it made me sad as a child. It's because it helps us to look somewhat realistically at death. Now, there are all kinds of interpretations about Charlotte's Web, what it means, and how, how the story unfolds and all that. We can say that as a story, it is overdetermined. And by overdetermined, what we mean is that it means practically everything you can bring out of it. It's just got so many applications. They're probably all true. Some people, for instance, like to read John 15, verse 13 in, in relation to Charlotte's Web. And it goes, of course, like this. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, I've meditated on that for a while, and I'm not sure if I agree with that or not in terms of interpretation for Charlotte's Web, but certainly that story inspired many people to make this connection. There was, of course, Fern, the little farm girl who didn't want the runt of the litter to be slaughtered, you know. And then there was the spider, Charlotte, who made her webs and helped to... Uh, keep people interested in Wilbur long enough for him to, to uh, live a little bit longer. If you're not familiar with the story, here's a very short uh, summary I just lifted from study.com, and it goes like this. Charlotte's Web is a story of friendship, courage, and self-sacrifice. Wilbur is a pig who finds out that he is destined for slaughter. His friend, a spider named Charlotte, who lives in the doorway of his pig pen, determines to save him. She accomplishes this by spinning words about him in her web. In this way, he becomes too famous to be killed, and his life is spared. Of course, we all know that they're just postponing the inevitable. Wilbur cannot live forever just because he got spiders saying nice things about him in their webs, of course, you know. But hopefully that's enough to jog your memory. And uh, the point, of course, is this. Death comes to all living things. Death is a part of life. Or as our passage today puts it, there is a time to be born and a time to die. How interesting is it that among all the religions of the world, the message of the gospel embraces death. Christ came to die, we might say. But as we know, that isn't the end of the story. He didn't just come to die. But as the scriptures say, God raised him from the dead. Not only was there a resurrection for Jesus, but as we all know and believe, there will be a resurrection for each of us. What we honor today here in this All Saints Day service is the earthly lives of our departed. But it's not the end of life. You see the difference? We celebrate the end of their earthly existence or the completion of their earthly existence, but not the end of their lives. So with these thoughts in mind, I thought I would bring back uh, the candle meditation by Dr. Elizabeth Lucas. And so throughout, as I share this meditation with you, I invite you, if you want to look at the candles that are burning, 
And you can already see a difference if you're looking closely that some have burned down fairly quickly and some have burned a little more slowly. But uh, you're, you're invited to look there or look up or close your eyes or do whatever. Here is the candle meditation. A candle is composed of wax and a wick. What we see is mainly the wax, and the wick is mostly hidden. Yet it is the wick that makes the candle a candle. Without the wick, it would just be a piece of wax. The wax can be compared to the human body, and the wick to the human spirit. It is the spiritual essence that makes us human, and without it, humans would simply be lumps of clay or balls of wax. When we light the wick, the candle becomes a candle. In the same way, the spirit lights up the human. A candle that would not light up would not fulfill its purpose. A candle that would never burn would have been made in vain. Only a burning candle fulfills its purpose. In the same way, a human being ignited by meaning lives his or her vocation of destiny. But when a candle burns, it gets shorter. As the flame consumes the wax, matter diminishes. The same applies to human beings. In youth, our body is vigorous, healthy, and blooming. But life marches on. It takes its toll on our bodies. Our bodies begin to lose vitality. The physical organism diminishes. If we watch a burning candle long enough, we would not only observe that the wax is being consumed, we might also come to realize that the length of time past in which the candle has already burned is growing longer. Its material substance has been transformed into illumination and warmth for its environment. Could it not be the same with us when we use our energy to transform the world? While our physical energy may be diminished in the process, what we have done while extending ourselves has increased meaning in the world. Consequently, we have become more, not less. Therefore, let us not grieve over the fact that the candle is getting shorter. Rather, let us rejoice in the time that it gives illumination and warmth to its environment and that that time is growing ever greater. Furthermore, imagine that a candle falls and breaks. The wax may shatter, but the wick does not break so easily. The wick can go on burning even though the candle is cracked. And so it is with us. In every life, there are moments when we stumble, fall, and even break. Yet the meaning within goes on guiding and healing, calling us to transformation through self-transcendence. Imagine that the broken candle or a broken person is in front of you. What can you do? You might examine why it broke, who dropped it, or who was guilty of breaking it, or it could be that it just fell. Whatever you discover the reason to be, the fact remains that it is broken. What more can you do? Well, you can try to tape, put a little tape around it or maybe some glue, but if you tamper with it too much, with the broken part, more wax may crumble away. But consider, if you straighten the candle carefully, as you might raise a broken person, the parts can come back together. You can secure the candle 
for a little while so that it stands again and light it. And when it burns, what will you notice? Even a broken candle can give off light. Hold on to this thought. A broken candle can still be a light to others. And a broken human being can find meaning again. While the broken candle burns and continues to fulfill its purpose of giving off light, in spite of being broken, it continues to grow shorter. And if we were patient, we will observe something else. That as the flame nears the broken part and burns over the part that has been broken, it is no longer a broken candle. It is whole again, and the break is only a memory. If we leave the room where the candle is burning and no one sees it lit anymore, no one will see it shine. But that would make no difference to the candle. The candle would continue to shine and illuminate the room, and warmth would continue to flow from it. It would remain forever true that the candle lit up its surroundings even if no one saw it. Even if we stayed outside the room until the candle burned out and nothing was left of it, it does not change the fact that the candle burned and gave off light and warmth. The light of the candle is not dependent upon the fact of someone else seeing it. And so it is with humanity. The light that we bring into the world is independent of whether someone sees it or not. The hours that the candle was shining remain true hours of light and warmth. The light that a human being brings into the world also remains behind forever. That is the end of the candle meditation. The lesson that I like to draw out of Charlotte's Web, of course, is that death is inevitable. But just as Charlotte passed away, her children were born, and they continued her work. Life gives way to death, but then death also gives way to life. Charlotte's Web was like the candle in our meditation, but so was Charlotte. And so was Wilbur, and so was Fern, the farm girl, and so on and so on. Just as life goes on, the message of the gospel is that earthly existence is not the end of life. It is only the precursor to something greater. So let us end with 1 Corinthians 15, 42 through 49. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, made of dust. The second man is of heaven. As one of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as one of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the one of dust, we will also bear the image of the one of heaven. And may God comfort us with these words. Is if you will trust in God to guide you, I invite you to stand as we sing verses 1 and 2.
Amen. And may today's service be of some comfort to each of us as we continue living our earthly existence, but as we recall in our hearts and our minds, in our spirits, those who have moved on to the next life. And so I'll leave you with these words. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement houses, where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, holy hands used as wave offerings across the land, we thank you, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head-ragged or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suited. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, and for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.